Welcome to another lesson. Over the next few videos, we're going to be covering a couple of different playback hacks. We won't, however, be looking at additional sound libraries that can be added to Sibelius. Rather, we'll just be focusing on the things that can be done in Sibelius alone. And for this lesson, we're just going to be looking at a couple of things that can be done with the mixer. So the hotkey to open the mixer is Control alt m we then see all of our different instruments and also our click track. And down the left hand side, we can expand the window a bit to include a couple more things such as plugin effects, if we have any virtual instruments, our instrument groups, and of course, our master volume. Now, most of this stuff is pretty self explanatory, so I won't go into too much detail. But there are a couple of small things in the mixer window that you might not have been aware of. For example, if I click on the icon directly under the CPU gauge, my window is expanded to include more mixing details. If I click it again, it expands again. And if I click it a third time, it expands once more. So just by clicking on this icon multiple times, I have more options available to me. And you can see that there are quite a few different features and parameters that we can play around with here. So if we start up the top, you can see we can play around with reverb a little bit. We have a reverb and chorus. Underneath this, I then have the option to change our player and our instrument. So I could select one of the instruments in my ensemble, the violin, for example. And here I can change its sound, its instrument sound, to something else. Uh, flute, for example. And this can be quite useful because we can be very specific about the sounds that we want to use. If I, for example, go to, let's say, trumpets, you'll see that not only can I select the normal trumpet sounds, but also a wide range of others. For example, trumpet with vibrato, portato, tenuto, consordino, etc., etc. And this wide range of options is available for most instruments in the list. And once I've finally selected something, if I'd like to hear how it sounds, I can click on the test sound button directly below. If we keep going, underneath this you'll see the panning dial. And as you're aware, using this we can pan our instrument to the left and right speaker as we choose. But what a lot of people aren't aware of is that if you want to quickly center the sound and reset the panning to zero, you can just double click the dial and it'll snap to zero. Now, believe it or not, the default panning in Sibelius actually corresponds to the way in which musicians typically sit on stage and the way that you would perceive the direction of the sound sitting in the audience. Directly underneath the panning, we can, of course, mute an instrument or get it to play solo. And obviously, we can also change its volume. And similar to the panning knob, if you double click the volume bar, the volume of that instrument is reset to the normal unmixed volume level. Now, what's also really interesting is that when you specify the exact player that you want and you take it off of, for example, auto and make it the Sibelius player, underneath the volume level, you'll see this button with two arrows on it. And if we click this button, it opens up to reveal even more instrument playback settings. In the violin, for example, you can see that I can change a whole lot of settings regarding the attack and release of the sound. If I increase the release, it sounds like this. And if I decrease it to zero, well, it sounds like this. And so by fiddling around with these settings, we can customize our playback sounds even further. And these settings are different for pretty much every instrument. Some instruments don't actually have these settings, but many, of course, do. Now, there is one last thing that I'd like to show you, and it's just a gimmick. It's not a very useful feature at all, but it's kind of fun. If you click really rapidly on the CPU gauge with the mouse, the mixer will start doing these crazy wave formations. Now, unfortunately, this is just a visual effect. It looks really cool, but it doesn't actually affect the playback sound, which is, of course, a bit of a shame. But nevertheless, it's still a great little Sibelius party trick. If you'd like to turn it off again, you just click the CPU gauge again. So that's a brief rundown of the mixer, and I'll catch you in the next lesson where we'll be looking at even more playback hacks.